I think there are sort of different phases, you know. I think I was a fairly conventional leader uh, when I went through places like uh, Durban and Johannesburg where I lived and worked and so on. So, um, you know, there were certain core things that are still true in my leadership. Like, I really believe in the discipline of hard work. I really believe I have a very low tolerance level for sloppiness. Um, I have a complete incapacity to lie to people about their work, so I will tell you if you're screwing up. Um, and people appreciate that over time. They don't like it when they don't know you. Um, I make huge investments in the development of other people, both in terms of personal time and energy, but also in terms of institutional resources. So those are core things that haven't changed. What changed for me in terms of a servant leadership dimension to what I did was my experience at the University of Pretoria. And I wrote about that in a book called Knowledge in the Blood. And, and because I was still an arrogant uh, black activist to believe that all white people were evil uh, and that kind of thing, which of course when I hear myself saying it today, I still get emotional about it because I can't believe I was so, so incredibly harsh and, and unforgiving, you know, and, and so on. So it brings a lot of shame. But it was in that period of the University of Pretoria where I was sort of confronted with not what I thought was every white person is rich and well off and, and a bloody racist, you know, but confronted with people who struggled with the same things that I was struggling with, who struggled with memory, who struggled with racism, who struggled with uh, poverty, you know, and these were white Afrikaans speakers in the main in Pretoria. And then, now that I'm a dean and I have to meet with these kids and their parents every day, I have hundreds of little meetings in their homes, in my office, at their schools, in their churches, uh, at Loftus, uh, etc. And I begin to see not arrogance and, and racism and pride, and so on, some of that stuff was there, but what I saw was vulnerability, what I saw was brokenness, what I saw was shame. And so my generation, the generation of my children, come into the new South Africa with a sense of being the victors, of having won, of having overcome. The children I was working with, even though they weren't there during the apartheid years, they came into the new South Africa with a burden on their backs. And I saw it, and I felt it, and I feared it, and I had to engage it. And that took me from being a super confident, self-assured, um, figured it all out kind of leader to a person that realized that these weren't other people, these were my people. And that changed me significantly, so I went to understand my role, not as one of imposing a particular understanding of leadership and understanding of the past, but as one who is equally broken and, and ashamed and fearful uh, to having to engage my brothers and my sisters um, on other terms.